With InWorld, you can create characters that can be used in video games, entertainment, the metaverse, brand experiences, or just for a bit of fun. Create open world games with characters that you can become friends with. Strategy games where you can ask the advice of historical generals. Host meet and greets with animated characters. Or create brand experts who can answer all your customers' questions about your product. And make jokes. Hi, I'm Jana. And I'm Clint, and we're here to teach you how to create amazing characters using InWorld's no-code technology. The InWorld Studio makes it simple to create characters in just a few minutes. Today, we'll show you the basics along with some tricks to take your characters to the next level. While watching this video, please keep in mind that InWorld's Character Creation Studio, as seen in this video, might not be identical to your current experience. We're always updating features to help optimize our characters, but this video will give you a good idea of how to get started. Now, let's hop into the InWorld Studio to create our character. When you first log in, you're going to be in the default workspace. This workspace features a handful of our most popular characters, and you can use them as reference in any way that you'd like. Now, if you're ready to create your own character, go ahead and click the Create New Character button in the top right corner of your screen. A pop-up window is going to come up, and it allows you to enter your character's name and basic details. Today, we're going to create a character inspired by Red Dead Redemption's Sadie Adler. We'll just enter her name here for now, the core description field is optional, and it can be entered in the next step. Next, let's click Continue to Character Creation. Once we're in the character's profile, the first field that we'll enter is the core description. When we create character descriptions, we focus on answering questions about the character's current state, background, and how they present themselves. First, we'll add some adjectives to describe what kind of character we're creating. In Sadie's case, we might call her things like strong-willed, independent, and tough. Next, we focus on contextualizing who Sadie is and what her backstory is. So, we might say that she's a woman who has had to fight for everything she's ever had. She grew up on a ranch in the Rockies, and her husband was killed in a robbery. If there are any key characters or locations related to your character, you should name them here. In this case, we mention her husband and the O'Driscoll boys. When we want to reference the character's philosophy towards life or the challenges that they're facing, we might use language in this case like, Sadie is a survivor who does whatever it takes to make it through life's tough challenges. Finally, if the character uses a particular kind of language or has a manner of speaking, you can also add that in here. In Sadie's case, she uses a lot of cowboy slang and has poor diction. As a tip, try to use elegant writing in the core description field. How would a novel or magazine article describe your character? What adjectives would they use? How would they paint a picture to try to capture your attention? This step needs to be more than a copy and paste from your average Wikipedia field. Okay, so the next section is motivations. In this section, you'll want to add single sentences describing what motivates the character when talking to others. It could be to accomplish a goal, make an opinion known, or even to cover something up. In this case, Sadie's motivations are to convince the person she's talking to to join her gang and come up with a plan. You can decide just how motivated a character is based on your wording. Your character could be aggressively trying to achieve their motivations, or maybe they just go about it comically or mysteriously. Up next is the identity section. This one is pretty easy to fill out. You input the character's name, their pronouns, and their role. This could be anything from a CEO to an angry ferret. In our case, Sadie is a gunslinger. You can then add the stage of life your character is in, from infancy to late adulthood. Then, you can add additional names you want your character to go by and include any hobbies or interests they have. Pro tip! Your character is going to bring up their hobbies and interests in conversation, so choose them carefully based on your use case. For Sadie, I'm going to list revenge, guns, and knives. Then, 
The next section is all about the character's personality and emotions. First, you need to add some character traits. These are adjectives that describe your character and help our AI create the right personality. For Sadie, we're going to write vengeful, relentless, reckless, loyal, nihilistic, and mournful. Next up is playing around with these fun sliders. They decide what kind of emotions your character will have in response to interactions. It also colors what your characters say. If you create a sad character, they're going to respond with sad responses. Also, characters' facial expressions and gestures are connected to their emotions. This is important to note if you'll be using our Arcade Avatar feature or integrating your character with Unity or Unreal. Great characters often have a range of emotions and can switch between them. With Sadie, we put her at minus 50 for both sadness and anger, minus 25 for disgust and anticipation. Emotional fluidity measures how quickly a character will shift from one emotion to another. Pro tip, if you make emotional fluidity too dynamic, the character could end up changing from one emotion to another with every utterance, which works for certain characters. Turning emotional fluidity to zero will disconnect your character from in-world's emotional AI abilities. The character will draw strictly from the traits and slider settings that you have entered. Now, let's move on to personality. While mood is related to how your character feels, personality is about how your character relates to others. In Sadie's case, we've made her 25 negative and minus 25 aggressive. Authority will determine how much of a subject expert a character is in relation to their motivations, hobbies, and facts. Pro tip, the authority setting needs to be handled delicately. If you make a character too authoritative, they might come across as arrogant or get angry if they are questioned. So, we tend to stick below 5 on the authority slider. Of course, authoritative characters can sometimes be very appropriate. We've set Sadie at plus 1 here. The facts and knowledge section is where you add personal knowledge and common knowledge. Personal knowledge is anything the character knows personally, whereas common knowledge is where you can add broader information about a time period or a game world that multiple characters will share. Personal knowledge should be written in a specific way with character always in brackets like you can see on the screen. For personal knowledge, you're going to want to add information that's relevant to the character and information that maybe only they know. This could be information about their backstory or relationships, but it might also include information about the character's motivations, personal opinions, or even what they're wearing. For example, I'm adding information about Sadie's past and present connections, the type of weapons that she commonly carries, and even the name of her horse. All of these things we would expect her to know offhand. Additionally, if there are any subjects that your character should be ignorant of, you may want to include that here as well. As a tip, characters will often draw from facts when they make specific talking points. Keeping this in mind, you might want to consider writing some of the facts in the voice of your character. This will make it seem almost like they're talking in third person. But when they draw from these facts, it'll already be in the tone of their voice. How would your character describe their relationships and cherished items? Is it their mother or their doting mother? Is it Sadie's horse or her beloved horse? If you're creating a standalone character, you don't necessarily need to add common knowledge. You can just add that in the personal knowledge field. But if you want to, you need to click on the section here that says common knowledge. Once you get the common knowledge section open, click on create new common knowledge. You're going to want to add a name for common knowledge and include some type of core description. Here, we'll call this cowboy slang and add terminology commonly used by gunslingers in the Old West as our core description. We can then paste in a list of slang terms that we've already assembled from some external source. Now, we'll click the plus button and add Sadie. In the future, if we create more Old West characters, then we can easily add them here without having to repeat all of that work. It's an easy way to create characters within the same world who share lore, rules, and dialects. You can ensure that a character regularly surfaces common knowledge by cross-referencing it in their core description. For example, 
If we create a common knowledge of cowboy slang terminology, we'll also write in the character's core description that they speak in cowboy slang. Using the same term in separate fields will help our brain engines connect them. Next, we'll be adding our character's voice. We have a number of voices to choose from, and you can cycle through them all by using this tab to see which is the best fit. You can then adjust the pitch and talking speed. If none of our voices are a fit for your game, please contact us to discuss working with voice actors to design custom voices. Pro tip, generally a voice's quality will become less satisfactory the more you alter the pitch and speed. Of course, this could also be used to your advantage for certain characters, such as a robot or someone who's otherworldly. Next, we'll look at dialogue style. There are five different dialogue styles to choose from. Default, blunt, bubbly, formal, and inquisitive. Our default will give you a curious character who doesn't really have any noticeable conversational habits. Well, well, ain't that something. I've been waiting for somebody like you to come along and be willing to take on the Odriscoll boys. Let's get down to business. I've got an idea for a plan and we can split up the gold and money they got when we're done. What do you say? Can you set with that? Blunt characters will say very little and be brutally honest. About time. Let's get to it. We gotta figure out a plan to take down the Odriscoll boys. A bubbly character will be excited and often ramble. Well, I'm glad you're here. You see, the Odriscoll boys have been terrorizing folks around here for too long. I've been wanting to take them down for a while now, but I need some help. That's why I'm here trying to put together a gang of gunslingers. And if you join us, we can get revenge and make some money in the process. We'll split whatever we find amongst us, so it's a win-win situation. Can't set with that. A formal character will be very stiff. Good, I can set with that. We'll need to come up with a plan for stopping the Odriscoll boys. They've got all kinds of stolen money and gold, and we can split it between us when we take them down. So let's get to work. And an inquisitive character will be very interested in learning more about you and your situation. Well, 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 what do we have here? A gunslinger who wants to join my gang. That's mighty fine news. I can set with that. Now let's talk about what we're gonna do. We know that the Odriscoll boys are out there somewhere, and they've got all kinds of stolen money and gold that we can split amongst our gang. So let's figure out a plan to track them down and ambush them. I'm sure between us two, we can come up with something real good. I'm going to choose the default style for Sadie. Pro tip, you can also put in example dialogue, but I find that it's better to include details about how a character talks in the character description and personal knowledge, since characters are prone to reference this out of context to the conversation. Good examples of times to use example dialogue would be catchphrases or colloquialisms. You can switch on any of our experimental features to try them out. Currently, these include filler words, emotions, and goals and actions. Filler words will add ums and ahs into a character's responses. This is great for a character that's nervous, shy, or unsure of something. We'll keep that setting off for Sadie. The emotion setting will allow a character to be more dynamic in their emotional range based on the conversation's context. Turning it off will keep your character set to their emotional state that you've determined in other sections. Sadie is a bit of a hothead, so we're going to turn this setting on for her. Goals and actions allow you to create triggers for your character to react in a certain way based on certain interactions or scenarios. Once you've enabled goals and actions, you'll see its own section pop up. You can then click the plus button and you'll get a pop-up where you can give your action a name and auto-filled ID. Let's call this Throw Bottle. If we want the character to react immediately once triggered, click on the Invoke Conversation setting. If not, the character will wait for an opening in the conversation. Next, click Add Instructions and enter how the character will react in this situation. Will they say or do something particular? In this case, Sadie will threaten to throw a bottle at the piano player if he doesn't play a sad song. Let's see how that works in chat. Well, partner, I'd sure appreciate it if you could play something a little more somber. I'm in the mood for something sad. Now, now, Mark, ain't no time for Johnny Tunes. We need something to match the occasion. Something that'll make us feel like we're in the depths of despair. Look. 
I don't mean to be rude, partner, but I ain't in the mood for any haggling. Let's just keep it simple. Can you play something that'll make me and my gangmates here in the saloon a bit more morose? Alright, alright. No need to get all riled up. But I'm gonna tell you this much. If you don't start playing something a mite more sorrowful, I'm gonna throw this whiskey bottle you away. So best be getting to it. Pro tip. For characters and projects with a narrative arc, consider following the structure of a script. We'll break down our characters' interactions into separate acts and then have specific beats within those acts. Pro tip, don't add character twice in the same goal instruction, as this can cause the character to reference themselves in the third person. You need to add your character to a scene. Now, if you just plan on talking to your character in InWorld Studio or in the InWorld Arcade, then you won't need to add a scene unless it's for added context. But if you plan to integrate your characters in Unity or Unreal Engine, you'll need to create a scene, as you need a scene key to move your characters over. In the scene section, you can click on Create a New Scene and then add the scene name and description to add any characters you want to your scene. So, let's add a saloon, and we'll say that the scene is in a small town saloon where Sadie is trying to recruit cowboys to her gang. You can then add Sadie to the scene and any other characters you might have created for this world to interact with her. Pro tip, you can also create scene triggers to help add narrative to the scene. You can write at length about the specific details. These can be things like when player comes in, Sadie offers to buy them a drink. Now we'll create an avatar for Sadie via our Ready Player Me integrations. We'll click the avatar here to open Ready Player Me's editor. We can add the right hair color, change the eye color, and then even choose an outfit. There you have her! You can also connect your in-world characters with any avatar system via Unity, Unreal Engine, and even our Node.js SDK. We make the brains for the characters, and you decide what they look like. As a pro tip, be sure to sign in to your Ready Player Me account before you design your character. That way, the avatar will be saved in your inventory for future reference. If you don't sign in, you would have had to design the avatar from scratch every time you needed to make an update, so this can be a really useful trick to keep in mind. You save that, and you go back to Sadie's character. She's all set. We generally like to chat with our characters at this point to see if they're coming out like we expected them to. Are they the right combination of personality and knowledge? Do we want to tweak something? Refining a character can take time, but it's important and worth the effort just to get it right. Have someone else test your character to get a fresh perspective, especially someone within your target audience. Character designers will often know the best questions to get the best responses from their characters, but your players will not. For someone with no context, will your character and its motivations actually make sense? You can also share characters in the InWorld Arcade so that others can enjoy them. To do that, just click on the share button here and add a character byline and conversation prompt. This is intended to help people understand your character and the best way to interact with them. Once you share your character, it'll go live on your page in the InWorld Arcade, and people can only find it if you share your link with them. You can then share that link on social media, or you can just use it to chat with the character yourself. As a tip, check off the Allow Character to be Featured box for the opportunity to be included on our very own InWorld Arcade and have your character interact with countless new players. We hope this video helped provide a basic overview of the InWorld Studio. We're constantly adding features and we're so excited for you to test them out. If you're looking for additional resources, we've published numerous Character of the Week blogs that include details about character creation. We also have an active community that you can find on our website that will be happy to help answer any additional questions. So sign up today for free. We can't wait to see what characters you create.
Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. You can check out more Character of the Week videos or our Character of the Week blog posts at inworld.ai blog, breaking down how we create each character.